Well, hi again, everybody, and welcome to Furman Softball Weekly Windup. I am Dan Scott, the voice of the Paladins. Slide this way, young lady. <laughs> that is Stacy Johnson Whitfield, and uh, she is the uh, head coach of the Furman Softball Program. Coming off of a three and two week and a weekend Southern Conference Series sweep of Western Carolina, taking the softball version of the battle of Purple Supremacy. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. You, you almost have a voice. <laughs> I almost have a voice. I apologize now. <laughs> get get a little intense this weekend, huh? Oh, yeah. There's a lot of young... I talk all the time when I coach, so usually mid-season my voice starts going downhill. <clears throat> well, uh, it, it was a big weekend uh, for the team, obviously. It's a big weekend for you personally because you went back to your alma mater mm -hmm. in, in the midweek and... Uh, Another one-run game yes. uh, in, in the first game of that doubleheader at South Carolina. Mm -hmm. Yes, that was a tight one, that's for sure. But we definitely could have won it. But, you know, in games like that, everything's got to be pretty much perfect to win it. And we had some errors and kind of handed the game a little bit. But, you know, next year. 6-5 six, six, <laughs> six, in that one and then 9-1 in the second one. Let's mm -hmm. talk about that first one, though, because – except for one inning. Of course, they all count. We know that. But ex except for one inning, you pretty much controlled that game. Yeah, we did. Um, Sierra did a great job in the circle. Um, that one inning, it, it wasn't errors on the board, but we had probably like three, four mental errors in one inning, which are worse, I feel like, sometimes than mm -hmm. the physical because, you know, you could control some things of that. But um, I felt like we were putting the ball in play. We were in every other inning than that one, like really just coming at them. And even at the end, I was so proud of the team because once they took the lead, we fought back and tied it up in the seventh and, and really had a shot again to to win against a big SEC team. So We know that the conference games, and we're going to talk about that in a minute, ultimately are, are the most important for you right now. But, but there's also something about especially – young team first year head coach trying to reestablish yourself or or establish yourself mm -hmm. depending on how you want to look at it in grabbing that quote unquote signature win mm -hmm. and and man it, it was right there. It, it was right <laughs> it was right there right yeah we've had like four like that i feel like where they've been right there and we just haven't but you know we put a tough schedule together this year and we knew it was going to be tough mm -hmm. but I am just proud that we have fought in all of those games. I mean, we did get the one big win, but, you know, we keep fighting. We keep pushing. And uh, I feel like those teams know now that we're not somebody that you can come in and be like, oh, it's a midweek and, and roll over us. They know they have to bring their best stuff to beat us and that we're going to be there to play until the last inning. What are your girls learning from these games, you think? I think um, this team – in the past, or some of these players might have sold themselves a little short. Um, I know, for instance, Sierra Tufts, um, the confidence that I've seen in her grow this year and the wanting of the ball. I always talk to the pitchers about, I want you to want the ball. And she would take that ball every pitch of every game if she could. Like mm. She really has stepped up for us and kept us in those games against some big teams. And in her eyes, she can beat any of those teams. That wouldn't be an upset to her. She feels like she can sit there, and she can. She can play with those teams. She can pitch against them, and she's doing a great job. But I think overall, our team has just learned how tough they are um, and how everyone can contribute. So, and, and it seems to me you're also seeing them learning that concentration has to be consistent for seven innings and one little lapse mm -hmm. in, a, in a big game can end up costing you the game. I mean, oh, yeah. I, I mean, the the difference between winning and losing, the margin is usually so small anyway. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think another lesson we're still trying to learn is that um, we need to show up when we have those big games against the big teams or any team, we have to show up for game two also. Mm -hmm. And that has been a struggle for us this year so far is showing up so much for that first game and then being – like worn out by the second and not allowing that momentum to, you know, transfer into the second game. But that also comes with, I think our pitching staff, we, we need to find a number two that will come out and get us and get that momentum rolling still and keep it going right out of the gate. Is it a mental fatigue or a physical fatigue in the second game? I think it's mental. Um, but then again, we all know that most of the game is mental. Mm -hmm. I, I think it's mental. I think it's, it's been tough 
being in those games like that can mentally take a toll on you. And um, I feel like our team has has had to get over those humps, um, you know, and we did this weekend, but, you know, we need to make sure that we can mentally be like, okay, that game's over with, and we played with a really good team, a team that people don't expect us to play with, and let's come out because they think they might have this one won, and they don't. Nobody's played an inning yet. And I, I think that's going to take a little time. Plus, we have a young team. So that takes a little bit of uh, more time on the field, you know, more experience. The flip side of, of that mental coin is also after winning a big game it is not assuming you're going to turn around and automatically win the next big game. So we fast forward to this weekend and the the, the conference tournament, the conference play with Western Carolina and, and the doubleheader on Saturday. You win game one. And in a close game, and mm-hmm. then you turn around and you blow them out in game two. So from that standpoint, that they they kept the right mental framework. Oh yeah, and we said that before they left the circle after the first game after the walk off. I said to them, I said, so here is this is the time where we have to decide: Are we going to make a change? Are we going to go into the locker room, eat our food, come out, and be prepared to come at them? Because obviously, any game that you win in a walk off is huge momentum. Um, but that they knew that that has been kind of a crutch to us this all year is like not being able to come back. And, um, I think they were prepared. They came out and even after the first inning, I mean, we gave a couple of runs at first inning or four runs at first inning. Um, and you know, one of my coaches came up to me, she's like, are you stressed? And I said, no, we got, we got a lot of game left. Like I just knew it. I so could the, feel so it. There, there was no, Oh no, here we go again. No, no, it, it, you could just feel it in the dugout. I mean, even the dugout, the players who aren't necessarily getting on the field, they were in it this weekend. They were there for us. And I stress that so much is how important it is to have your your dugout and your bench sitting there cheering you on, ready to go at any time they need. We had a lot of pinch runners this weekend, you know, and they did well for us. But I feel like I, it, there was no stress. Like I sat there and I was like, no, we got a lot of game left. I know we're going to fight back. And we did. I mean, tremendously. Sunday, you obviously get the opportunity to go for the sweep. What was the talk about prior to that game? That the weekend wasn't over yet. It was great getting those two wins the first day, but we still had a whole new, brand new game to play on Sunday, and I wanted them to come out as eager as they were the first day to get a win and possibly get a sweep, and we did. That, that's that's when, when you tell your team it's okay to be greedy, right? Mm-hmm. You, you've won you've won the series. <laughs> now now it's okay to be greedy. Yeah. Let, let's go ahead and get the sweep. Yeah, and you know it's funny. This weekend um, we had a lot against us because we had a couple people sick through the weekend. We had um, an injury that Saturday when we came out, we didn't think we were going to have two of our starters in the lineup at all. And the first game, we didn't have one of our starters in the lineup, and we had to switch positions between our short and second baseman. We had to switch them over, so Natalie Morgan had to play short, and Alex Rose Molinar had to play second because her arm was hurting. So um, we didn't know what was going to happen that first day with that going on. And then Chloe Fabio didn't get to start third because she was getting an IV during the first game. She was dehydrated. And then we get the first win like that, and then the second – we come out, Chloe's back in the game, and they're still playing positions that they really have not played this year. And we came out one again. And then on Sunday, Riley Ludlam wasn't in the lineup because she was sick. So, it, And she's been one of our best hitters the last 10 games or so. I mean, or if not, our best hitter the last 10 games. So there was a lot against this team this weekend, but I we just rolled with the punches. I told them I have confidence in anybody up in this field. I want you to have the same confidence you know, and and they did. It was great. Tell tell me about the growth that you've seen from this team start to finish. I mean, people will look at the record overall and see eighteen and twenty six. Obviously, that in and of itself is not great. But six and six in the league, third place in this league, with everything that you've faced coming in from the interim coach tag to all of the other stuff that's gone on. What kind of growth have you seen from this team to you, coming through this weekend where we are right now? Well, we also have to remember like eight of those games were <clears throat> power five teams. Right. <laughs> so, and we did pull out one win of those eight. But um, I think the biggest growth I've seen is their confidence. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I feel like any of them 
believe that I believe that they could do what I need them to do at that point. If that's pinch run, if that's pinch hit, if that is play a position that they're not used to playing, um, I hope, uh, I, but I do believe that they know that I have the confidence, which I feel like if they think that the team and the coaching staff has the confidence in them, no matter what we do with them, um, that that does, that takes them far. Um, I think they came in unsure of what was going to, we had a lot of freshmen coming in. We have a very young team. We lost a couple of players from last year that were key to us. Obviously a coaching staff change. There's a lot piled up against you, but they just broke through that and exceeded more expectations than I, I even thought this year. You, you talk about the position changes and, and doing especially four years of minor league baseball broadcasting now, and, and you see that intentionally where they're putting guys in, in different positions. Do you find, especially with middle infielders, that if a young lady can play short, usually she can play second and vice versa? Yeah, and, and in the beginning of the year, we did – try to move around when we had our tur- tournaments here we we're playing a lot of games we tried to move them around a little bit to kind of figure out what worked best mm-hmm. um when we figured that out we've kind of kept it the same right <clears throat> we don't have a lot of middle infielders right now so we're kind of making do uh, natalie morgan um she is i love her to death she's a utility true but she would probably tell you she's more of a third baseman catcher than she is a second baseman and both of us have joked around that we never thought she'd be playing second base this year. But, I mean, she took it with stride. She was like, okay, well, I'm playing second, so I'm going to give you the best second I can. Um, But I think that because we don't have necessarily the depth in positions that you usually would or do, that um, the girls who are playing positions right now that they didn't think have really stepped up to the plate. And, um, you know, even Ashley Likens, our center fielder, who's truly played center, I think, for two years now, she even the other day when she knew we had some injuries and some sickness, she's like, if you need me to play second, I'll play second. Like, <laughs> and I just love that. And I know she's kind of terrified to say that statement, but that's the willingness to do whatever it takes to put the best field on the team. It's like, I don't really or want to. Field. I don't really want to, but if you need me to, I will, right? Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> After the game, she's like, I was so happy you didn't have to do that, but I would have done it anyway. <laughs> this is the uh, Furman Softball Weekly Windup with uh, head coach Stacy johnson Whitfield. All right, as we get into the home stretch here, turning towards this week coming up, another Power Five yeah. on the road at number 14, Georgia. Yeah, we're going into Georgia on Wednesday. Um you know, I'm I'm always excited to play the big teams mm-hmm. because you do feel like you kind of have nothing to lose. You kind of go out there and you you play your best ball, and if that keeps you tight to the game or win a game, that's great. Um, but I think that will be a great team to play going into our weekend series. You know, the key to this game, and I feel like I've said this a bunch, is keep the ball in the park. George is also, I think, maybe leading the nation or in the top five in the nation home runs right now. Um, They're killing the ball. So if we can kind of keep them in the park, we'll be able to play with them a little bit, but we'll see what happens. And then on the road in conference play at UNCG. Yes, which uh, they're also, I think, top five in home runs. So it will be a big weekend uh, also for us. They're, I think, undefeated in SoCon play right now. Um, They have some great pitchers. um, Some Obviously, they have some powerful hitters, but, um, you know, we took two from them last year. Um, I think that, if we go in and play our ball, it will definitely be some good games this weekend. So, so while the, the, the Power 5 games obviously are, are one way to test your team, the, the real litmus test right now is what you're doing in conference play, and, and this, is, this is the litmus test so far as far as the Southern Conference. Oh, yes. Yes. Um, and, and like I said, UNCG is at the top of the conference right now undefeated. They haven't even got a loss yet. Um, and I think Sanford's right behind them, and mm-hmm. they only lost one game, and that was to us. Um, so if we can go in this weekend and, and take a couple wins or a win or, you know, just push push some pressure on them, I really do believe uh, we are a team to be reckoned with this weekend. Well, we're going to let you go rest your voice because you you got to be able to yell on Wednesday. <laughs> it's it's going to be gone. I know it. <laughs> <laughs> well, we record these on Monday, so we're going to try to give her a couple of days to get rested up before they go into uh, Athens on Wednesday to take on the number 14 Georgia Bulldogs in midweek action and then on the road again uh, this weekend for UNCG and then the following week close out the regular season at home and we'll yeah. talk about that next Monday. It's good to yeah. see you. Good to see you As too. always. <laughs> this has been the uh, Furman Softball Weekly Windup. Hope you are enjoying this new addition to uh, our 
athletic departments. Uh, I hate to use the word propaganda, but that's kind of what we're doing. <laughs> Your purple propaganda, putting out all the information we can to get you fans informed. We'll be back again next Monday with another edition of the Weekly Windup. Until then, for Stacy, I'm Dan Scott. As always, saying God bless you. So long, everybody. <laughs>